Okay, so on Twitter, I made a joke about how we're literally never gonna run out of ideas because we just constantly will niche down and find something interesting to talk about. And Really Good Gaming actually responded to my tweet asking which Halo game has the most vehicles and then put their money on ODST. Something I never really thought about looking through and thinking about. But when Luke and I started talking about this question, we started to realize there's a ton of variables that could possibly make literally any individual Halo game the definitive game with the most drivable vehicles. And we're not just talking types of vehicles. We want to know individually how many vehicles in total can you sit down in and put your drink in the drink holder for whatever reason. That's the criteria as whether or not we count it as a vehicle. And I think it's pretty fair. Okay, but before we jump into it, every once in a while a brand comes around and wants to partner up with us and sponsor a video like this. And it's always really exciting because we get to make these type of thorough videos. So today's video is sponsored by Hero Wars. Hero Wars is a fantasy online action RPG game that has both PvP modes and PvE modes. Jumping right into it, you can play through the campaign mode, which actually has over 130 missions, where you can immerse yourself in the lore and the story. You can then complete missions, kill bosses, and also level up new heroes. But besides just having a campaign, there's actually a lot of other things that this game offers, like Arena where you can fight against other players in your server. There's this place called the Airship where you can send your heroes on expeditions and you can upgrade artifacts for your guardians. You can even join up with guilds and participate in Guild Wars where you team up with other members of the guild and fight off this Hydra. Now there's two versions of the game. One is Hero Wars Mobile, which is on Android and iOS, and there is a web version as as well. So if this sounds interesting to you, join the game now and get a super chest with a secret hero as well as 62 emeralds and 30,000 gold. Just scan this QR code or download the game from the link below in the video and we'll see you in the game. So how does each Halo game stack up against each other and which Halo game has the absolute most amount of vehicles that you can ride or drive across the entire franchise? And since our main objective is to count the total number of vehicles in every Halo game and then be able to compare the stats across all of the Halo games, we had to come up with a couple of ground rules first. First up, every single ground vehicle that you can drive or ride along in will count as one vehicle per level, and any flying vehicle that is intended for players to fly will also count as an individual vehicle. Now, flying vehicles that are not necessarily explicitly intended for players to fly in, like for instance on Assault on the Control Room, you can trick a Banshee into flying low enough to you and then kill the pilot and take that banshee. If a level like that exists where a hijackable banshee is permitted through some sort of trickery, it does come up a few times. Even if you can do it with multiple different banshees, if there's a trick banshee available, that'll just count as one vehicle. We don't want to try to count all of the unintended vehicles. We want to just kind of keep it limited to one point. So starting things off with Halo Combat Evolved, Pillar of Autumn is pretty straightforward. There's no vehicles in this entire level that you actually sit in or be in. We would have counted the drop pod had it had a real seat that you have to sit in, but since it activates the cutscene before Master Chief just ping pongs his way in there, Halo 1 starts things off with zero vehicles so far. On the level Halo, there's actually one at the beginning that gets dropped off for you, and then you do ride away in a Pelican at the end though, which does bring it up to one extra vehicle on Halo Combat Evolved. So besides the Pelican ride at the beginning of Truth and Reconciliation, there's no vehicles here. Moving on to Silent Cartographer, things are a little bit confusing because if you're playing co-op, you get dropped off by two pelicans. But then right after the beach fight, there is Foehammer who comes around and drops off a warthog for you to drive. There's also two other warthogs scattered amongst this level that are flipped over that you can also utilize if need be. But when you leave the level, you do get picked up by Foehammer, which means we have to actually account for that third pelican rather than it being the same pelicans that dropped us off. Because since we know that it is in fact Foehammer and Foehammer is in charge of dropping off the Warthog, it is a different Pelican. Assault on the Control Room is a fresh start though, we get dropped off by a Pelican, and we had to go through this level and painstakingly count all of the vehicles all over the place. And this one was actually a bit surprising, despite the decent UNSC presence in this level, we definitely were surprised that there's only one Warthog and one Scorpion in this entire level. However, on the flip side, there are 19 different ghosts, and then there are two Banshees that are on the end section 
that are placed there that players can jump into and fly straight to the end of the level in a quick little shortcut if you're fast enough. But there also is a trick earlier on in the level, one that's often utilized in lasso runs and in some speedrun scenarios where you can actually trick one of the elites who's flying the Banshee into jumping out of the Banshee right at the outdoor section by the first bridge. So by pulling off this glitch type thing, you can manipulate a third Banshee. So all in all in this level, there's two Banshees and one Trick Banshee. 343 Guilty Spark has you once again being dropped off on a Pelican, but outside of that, there are no other vehicles. Also, the library has no vehicles. Two Betrayals is interesting. Early on in the level, you get two Banshees right away, though every time you go into the indoor section, the game does respawn you two more Banshees next to wherever you parked your Banshees. And that actually happens in multiple different places in this level, along with the game giving you extra Banshees here and there. There even were some more Banshees on top of this high up tower thing, so we had to be really careful to make sure we were counting all of them, let alone making sure we were counting all of the ghosts that were shooting at us at various times. And in the process of all of that, we did find one Warthog on two betrayals. It's kind of chilling there. So there's 12 Banshees, six ghosts, and one Warthog. Not quite as many vehicles as Assault on the Control Room, but these two levels are kind of the big vehicle levels of Halo Combat Evolved. Now at first glance, keys, you might think there's no vehicle on this level, easy pass, but you do in fact fly the two Banshees at the end for a very short period of time, so we have to include them here. But we got really confused when we were jumping into the Maw, because this is a little bit confusing in itself. At the end of the level, we know that a lot of explosions happen and you pick a Warthog and drive off, but can you technically drive all of the Warthogs, or is there one or two set Warthogs you can drive? Are the rest non-operable? So we knew we would have to test out a couple of things on this level. So as it turns out, the Warthog Warthogs actually aren't destroyed in the explosion, just the area is on fire, but any of the Warthogs are drivable. So there are six Warthogs in this area, with the one Warthog later on in the Warthog run at the bridge, which you can also take. So with that extra Warthog, that brings us up to seven Warthogs on the Maw. And just as the first number that we're going to start comparing each Halo to, Combat Evolve starts things off with 64 total vehicles across its entire campaign. Now, CE is unique, of course, because so many levels start or end with a Pelican, something that not necessarily will be accounted for in later Halo games where they did different types of levels. Moving forward with Halo 2 and later Halo games, we expect the frequency of these Pelican starts and endings to be reduced significantly. So with the bar set at 64, let's see how Halo 2 holds up against Combat Evolved. Now Cairo Station actually has one secret Warthog that was from likely a cut section of the campaign. CM Near actually has a really cool video explaining how you can get this Warthog to spawn, but yeah, it's a fully functioning Warthog that you can jump in, sit in, put your big gulp in the drink holder, whatever you need to do. So we do have one Warthog on Cairo. Luke and I had a lot of fun jumping through outskirts and counting all of the various vehicles along the way. We had to be careful though, looking out for duplicate vehicles that we would maybe want to count a second time, which really was just a vehicle from earlier catching up to wherever we were. But those tunnels definitely have a lot going on on outskirts, and we were able to count in total 23 ghosts, now, we kept our Warthog all the way through from when we first jumped in it on the beach, and we had no other Warthogs spawn in during this time, so we ended up with just one Warthog on outskirts. Now, depending on the state of your Warthog, you could potentially get one or two more Warthogs spawn, but for the sake of us doing a count through, we only had one here, so we're going to just let the RNG lie and count it as one Warthog for now. Next, we're jumping on to Metropolis, and right away, we have to choose between a Warthog or a a scorpion tank on a difficulty like this. We like to take the Warthog just because it's faster. We drove along the bridge dodging a couple of wraiths and ghosts along the way and at the early section before the tunnel there are a few banshees that are flying around and you actually can hijack these banshees. So with our flying vehicles rule we do count however many banshees are in this area as one trick banshee. This is mostly to avoid instances where we would have infinite banshees spawn in later levels which could end up skewing our overall numbers, which really are focused on how many vehicles you're able to drive in each Halo game. So in instances like this, where we technically could have just a ton of vehicles that we can hijack in one way or another, we're only going to count those ones as one trick vehicle unless the vehicle is intentionally left for players to fly. We push through though the rest of the tunnel.
tunnels. There's one warthog that does join us. And later on, there is another gauss hog and another warthog amongst four wraiths that also are in the area. But overall, ghosts seem to be the most prevalent vehicle in this level with a grand total of 15 ghosts. So all in all, Metropolis and Outskirts each uniquely have 24 total vehicles. Now we do know Metropolis has a little bit of RNG as to when and how the vehicle spawned scales based off of difficulty, but since we're just trying to compare every Halo game on easy difficulty, some extra wraiths and ghosts didn't necessarily spawn in in our count through run. I think with Halo 2 we're probably going to have to do a give or take a couple of vehicles by the end of all this. Fast forward to the Arbiter, there are five different banshees that you can actually pilot in this. There's two when you meet up with the Heretic, and then there's two backup banshees outside, and you can also jump into the Heretic Banshee after he gets out towards the end of the level, so there's one extra bonus banshee there. The Oracle has a very short flying sequence, so there are two banshees that technically you'll be in if you're playing co-op, so that was an easy one to count. Moving on to Delta Halo, this level is a very vehicle heavy level, and while there are various vehicles that you can take to clear the way, like a Warthog that gets dropped off early on or the Scorpion later on, in total there's 29 ghosts that you can take out in this level and one Wraith. Regret's kind of a walk in the park, there's just no vehicles here, so that was easy and we actually have the same luck with Sacred Icon. Quarantine Zone is another vehicle heavy level with a lot of stuff definitely going on. Typically Luke and I are just used to zipping past all of the enemies when we play this level, but instead we had to painstakingly count every vehicle on this level. All in all, there's quite a bit going on where there's 20 ghosts, 2 specters, 3 warthogs, 4 scorpions. This next one was impressive, I never realized it, but there's 8 wraiths spread across this level, and 2 gauss hogs while you're at it, which Yes, that is actually how you're supposed to pronounce it. Then Gravemind keeps things easy with zero vehicles. Next, we're going on to Uprising. One of those levels we usually just do the out of bounds skip to just clear as fast as possible. So it's always fun to jump on and do a challenge where we have to play through this level normally. But there are quite a few ghosts here with 13 total ghosts, one specter and two wraiths. At this point, it's definitely looking like Halo 2 will have Combat Evolved beat out, but let's see by how much Halo 2 actually goes with this vehicle count. And Master Chief's adventure is just about the same. High Charity has zero vehicles as well. Lastly, we were on the Great Journey, which does have quite a few wraiths that you have to clear out on the way in, and then again on the way out. All in all, there's actually 10 wraiths, three different specters, 12 total ghosts, and then there's seven banshees later on, which these are of course the banshees that are left behind for players to jump in in case they lose their banshee. So after all of this, after adding up all the vehicles across every level in Halo 2, Halo 2 comes to an extremely impressive 177 vehicles and is now a front runner for possibly being the Halo game with the most total vehicles. Though with Halo 3 having some very vehicle centric levels, we wouldn't be too surprised if Halo 3 manages to take that title. So onward we were to Halo 3 to see how Halo 3 stacks up against CE and Halo 2 and to definitively say which one has the most vehicles. So starting things off on Sierra 117, not too much going on in this level, though we do jump in a pelican at the end of the level, which was kind of refreshing with it being a little bit since we got to do that in the combat evolved days. Okay, Crow's Nest is kind of funny because there's typically no vehicles you can actually drive or ride in, but there is that one warthog that explodes and technically if you are fast enough and you headshot the marine very quickly while moving at the warthog at maximum speed, you can jump into the driver's seat. Now we tried doing this over and over and over again and couldn't pull it off ourselves, but there's video clips out there of people who have managed to pull this trick off, so we can count Crow's Nest as one warthog, even if it's, you know, a little overcooked. Savo Highway was interesting after the elevator slip up debacle on Crow's Nest. There's just two warthogs that are still intact, though as we progressed through the level, we knew we'd have to be really careful making sure we didn't pass by any extra vehicles and not count them along the way. There's actually quite a few warthogs on Savo Highway. In total, there was eight regular warthogs and one adorable transport 
hog just chilling there. I mean, how could we not pick it up and drive it? There's also just a ton of choppers, which makes counting a lot harder because they're constantly just boosting around and maneuvering and just constantly being annoying. But there were 16 choppers in total on Savo Highway, so it definitely went hard with the brute vehicles here. There also were four wraiths, which meant in total, this level had 29 total vehicles, which was a pretty strong start for Halo 3 compared to the other Halo games. Going onto the storm as badly as I wanted to count the dumpster that you can fly in this level technically doesn't fit our rule set we have for this challenge, mostly because it doesn't have drink holders. Though there are a lot of smaller vehicles throughout this level, there's 13 ghosts, which was a lot more than I had anticipated when we were counting. There's three anti-air wraiths, which you can actually operate in Halo 3 by doing that little punching glitch and you can jump into the seat. Also, there's two choppers and one normal wraith. Transport warthogs seem to be pretty popular on this level too, as you can start off with two transport hogs and later on there's two more transport warthogs. There's also one regular warthog in the opening area of the level. And then in this section, there are four mongoose just chilling there, though one more mongoose does get dropped off by a pelican later on. This level's just shy of Savo Highway with only 29 vehicles, but still, two high counting levels back to back is pretty impressive. But we haven't even gotten to levels like the Ark or the Covenant. Bloodgate has no vehicles, so it's an easy count here. And things get a little bit chaotic on the Ark because there are a ton of vehicles in this level. It's a very vehicle-centric level, to be clear. Starting things off, there's two pelicans that drop off the players early on. And after pushing past the sniper area, there's a lot that goes on in the desert -y area in the first half before you get to the forward unto dawn. I mean, there's mongooses, there's warthogs, there's prowlers, there's choppers, there's ghosts, you name it, it shows up more or less at some point or another. Later in the level, there's even more ghosts, some wraiths, some AA wraiths, and a bunch of scorpion tanks dropped off along with a bonus warthog, which we then used to drive to the other area and clear out the wraiths and extra things along the way. Now, we were very careful to make sure we destroyed our vehicles before going into the indoor section to make sure that the vehicles we get on the next area are in fact a fresh spawn of the vehicles and not our old beat up vehicles from before, which of course was in fact the case. So going to the area with the Scarab fight, we do have three fresh tanks, some new warthogs, and some other vehicles we have to kind of blow up along the way. So the arc ended up being pretty packed altogether with a total of six warthogs, two mongai, 28 ghosts, three prowlers, 12 choppers, two AA wraiths, nine normal wraiths, six scorpions, one gauss hog, and a large Dr. Pepper. We had our two pelicans, and we may have a winner of the most vehicles in any Halo level, at least so far, as the Ark has 71 total vehicles through and through. So not only was it a challenge counting all of this, but it is really cool to see how this level stands out as a special Halo level in one way or another. But the Covenant, the next level, does keep the momentum going, dropping players off out of two pelicans once again. There's an AA Wraith that we face off against against very early on, and a mongoose and a warthog get dropped off for the players. Now between the fighting section at the first tower, the flying section with the hornets, and technically you can hijack banshees here, so we do count this as one bonus trick banshee. There's some more AA rates, and then there's that final charge into the last area where the two scarabs drop in, and then there's a ton of ghosts, prowlers, there's even some extra hornets that drop in as well. There's definitely a lot going on here, and there's even some very that can make it more confusing. Like for instance, if you're playing four player co-op, there's gonna be four hornets at the first section instead of just one or two. So all in all, in the covenant, we had two pelicans, four AA wraiths, six hornets, one banshee, three mongoosins, one warthog, 14 ghosts, three wraiths, six prowlers. We had one transport warthog, one gauss hog, and one scorpion for a grand total of 43 vehicles on the covenant. But then there is another variable that we do have to account for that we kind of skipped over when counting originally for this run, but technically if you strand yourself on the middle island and you have one player fly away with the hornet and fly over to a specific area, there's a trick where you can cause an infinite number of hornets to continuously fly in and spawn in. We actually played around with this glitch on our video where we were trying to cause our game to crash, and you can just acquire an infinitely large number of hornets if you want. So while we 
we do say there's 43 total. There is a little asterisk we have to put and say that technically you could make this number as large as you want until your game crashes, which is actually a little bit of an issue that we run into in later Halos as well. So we're going to count the level quote unquote normally in this case, but we did want to acknowledge the fact that there is a way that you could completely change some of the numbers for the overall games by manipulating these types of glitches, which do show up from time to time in later Halo games, which we'll get into when we get to those levels. Nonetheless, without us counting the infinite hornets in Halo 3, this level also is a very strong level with 43 total vehicles, just only being beat out by the Ark, obviously. And with Cortana not having any vehicles, all we have left is Halo, and we'll just count the vehicles, including the two warthogs that you can have in co-op for driving the end section, the four ghosts you can get if you're doing Vidmaster Annual, if you play on Heroic, two choppers can spawn, and there's a secret mongoose you can also take as well. There's also these bonus warthogs that are available on the platforms in case you lose your warthog in the process. So with all those extra warthogs together, there's a total of five warthogs available on this last level with a total of 12 total vehicles in this finale to Halo 3. Now, when we compare Halo 3 to something like Combat Evolved, it's quite interesting overall because Halo 3 has way more vehicles coming in with a grand total of 100 87 total vehicles across Halo 3, and that's ignoring the infinite number of hornets that technically we could spawn that can just get dropped off for us. Now, here's the interesting turning point in this video. Do you think there is a Halo game that can beat out Halo 3's 187 vehicles? That's a crazy number. ODST does have quite a few vehicles, so it will be interesting to see how this level holds up, but also, what about the later Halo games like Reach 4 or 5? Reach might might also be a very interesting one to look at, and also maybe not underestimate Halo 5 just yet either. But first, looking at ODST, Mombasa Streets is a confusing level because there are the secret caches that do have some mongooses, but not every cache has mongooses. So out of all of the caches, there are two that carry mongooses, so that puts a total of four mongooses as there's two of them in each cache. And sometime after Chapter 3, there is an RNG chance that there is a functioning ghost that you all also can drive. But other than those five vehicles, that's it for Mombasa Streets. So before we jump into the main campaign levels, we're already starting things off with five. We also got into the debate as to whether or not we should count the drop pods as vehicles, and we think we should because they're kind of in the same fashion of how the pelicans were in Combat Evolved, where you start off in one of them and you jump out, and especially because you have to hold down right bumper to jump out of the drop pod, that definitely kind of solidifies it as a vehicle. So four player co-op, there's four drop pod spawn locations. So we will add an extra four to Mombasa Streets as well. Now, Teari Plaza doesn't have much going on, so there's no vehicles here that we can ride in or drive, but things do get a little bit interesting on Uplift Reserve. There are quite a few vehicles here, maybe not as many as the Ark, but a comparable number of vehicles to something like Halo 3's Savo Highway. In the first section, there's four warthogs in the vicinity driving around, there's choppers driving through, there's a couple of ghosts that pop up, there's actually a lot of wraiths that seem to show their ugly face in a level that can be completed in under three minutes. Nonetheless, we painstakingly went through to make sure we didn't miss any of them along the way, and counted a total of seven different warthogs, along with seven choppers, and 17 wraiths. Bungie really did have that obsession with the number seven. Then, if you look at the total number of ghosts, there's 17 ghosts in this level. This could just be a coincidence or an Easter egg that maybe no one else ever noticed, but we thought it was kind of cool. All in all, Uplift Reserve has 38 total vehicles. Kazingo Boulevard is another interesting level as it's that one level where you're in the tank and you get to just blow stuff up in the process. All in all, there's three different scorpion tanks that you have access to in this level, and there are five total wraiths that you can do the hijack trick in in ODST to gain control of. There's also nine ghosts that serve as cannon fodder along the way, and there are banshees in this level that you can utilize by doing a hijack trick, which is often used in speedruns or for achievements, so we will count one trick banshee towards our list as well. So we have 18 total vehicles on Kazinga. Next, we're going on to Oni Alpha site, and this level is pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of vehicles. The only thing we really have to count here are the six wraiths that technically you can glitch inside of, and 
then there's one pelican on the rooftop you do jump in to end the level and mpd hq is actually a really interesting one because all of the banshees on this level are not hijackable even with a glitch with the exception of exactly one banshee so we do get to count a trick banshee on this level even though the rest of the banshees are not at all operable next we were jumping on kikawani station and it was actually really funny because luke dim and i had placed bets ahead of time as to how many banshees there would be on this level left for players luke went ahead and guessed 12 banshees dim guessed around 16 banshees and i went for the higher route guessing 22 banshees and while this was a meaningless bet i did end up winning this one out still not with the right number but i was the closest one with a grand total of 26 total banshees 25 of them are left for players plus one trick banshee you can get by hijacking a banshee also in this level there was just one lone ghost for whatever reason and then there's also one wraith and two AA rates, which you can also acquire by doing a glitch. After Kikawani Station, Data Hive actually has no vehicles, though we were thinking driving mongooses on this level would be so much fun. And then came the big level, Coastal Highway. We were pretty sure Coastal Highway would straight up make or break this entire run, because there's a ton of vehicles all in all here, and if ODST is gonna stand any chance against Halo 3 or even Halo 2, it's gonna come down to Coastal Highway's performance. So all along the main highway, there are a lot of warthogs left behind for players to jump in and we're actually impressed with how many in total there's seven normal warthogs throughout the highway along with six special transport hogs there's also three gauss hogs along the way as well and then of course there's the one scorpion tank that you're intended to use later in the level there's also these ghosts that are in the in-between sections at most of the checkpoints which do add up when you're progressing through this level and if you play on a legendary difficulty going for vidmaster deja vu with the iron skull on four extra mongeeth spawn in the bottom so with a hefty number of unsc vehicles already on this level counting the covenant vehicles was quite challenging making sure we weren't missing any of the ghosts or the wraiths but we were pretty sure we got a mostly accurate count where we counted a total of 20 ghosts in coastal highway along with five wraiths and one aa wraith and all in all while coastal highway does have a pretty large number of vehicles with around 58 total vehicles it didn't, of course, individually beat out the arc that had over 71 vehicles, which at this point is still in the lead, but ODST also does fall just short of passing up Halo 2 or Halo 3 with a total of 160 vehicles. Actually, a lot closer than what we had thought it would end up being, but still 17 less vehicles than Halo 2 and 27 less vehicles than Halo 3. But Halo Reach is a pretty long game in itself, and maybe it will be the game that stands up and and dethrones Halo 3. Plus, there are also extra types of vehicles like the forklift and human vehicles like trucks that can also count towards the list since they are drivable. So it will be interesting to see how Halo Reach compares to these other ones. All in all, we're optimistic Halo Reach stands a pretty decent chance to have a very high number of vehicles. So jumping off onto Winter Contingency, we have two Falcons right away that we ride in on and these Falcons do later give us a lift to the end section of the level. There are also six trucks that you drive from one point to the other. And then in that end little section, you do get to drive two different forklifts, which of course are one of the best things about Halo Reach. Oni Sword Base ups the ante even more, this time around letting you drive forklifts right out of the get-go. There's also some carts that you can jump in. And when we were testing out and counting vehicles, we were careful to make sure we destroyed the vehicles when we first passed by them. So when we backed track later on in the level we could see if they were in fact the same vehicles or if they're brand new ones so interestingly enough after we played through the outside section and came back there are fresh forklifts and carts that end up spawning in so we have to count those as different ones because they're not of course the same ones so in total there are four forklifts and three carts for the rest of the level there are two wraiths we found this flipped over transport hog but there are a couple of warthogs that end up getting dropped off for players as well then there's six ghosts four revenants and one gauss hog going on to nightfall interestingly enough if you do a glitch where you essentially jump on top of this phantom early fly out of the map past the barrier break out and then land safely then travel outside the map all the way back to the beginning of the level you can find a regular banshee that's not intended for players to fly but it does count as a normal banshee but outside of this there aren't any vehicles on the level except for five forklifts so halo reach hitting it hard with the forklift game tip of the Spear is definitely a lot more
more action-packed. There's a lot more vehicles around in this level. We made sure to go through and count all of them that are spread out amongst this level. There's five ghosts, one rocket hog, two revenants, there's also four wraiths. You can also find four different trucks scattered along this level. There's one normal warthog, and then there's the two falcons that will fly your team to the spire section. Now in the spire section, there is a glitch you can do to gain a banshee. So we will also add one trick banshee to the list. So all in all, there are 20 total vehicles on tip of the spear, which surprisingly was less than what we expected for a vehicle heavy level in Halo Reach, especially considering the abundance of vehicles in Halo 3. Exodus this doesn't actually have too much going on for vehicles early on, but the last section does have quite a few vehicles in the little time you do spend over there. There's two warthogs and two mongeast, and then there's two wraiths and two ghosts. There's also, of course, the two falcons that fly you in. And then interestingly enough, if you do this crazy glitch where you break out of the map and you journey for some time, there's this random parked pelican way out of the map. And there are in fact seats that you can sit on and technically ride even if it's not departing. It likely is a part of a cut section of the level, but since you can sit in it and if you had a drink, there would be a place to put your drink. We do count this one as well, adding one extra pelican to this level. Next, we were going on to Long Night of Solace, which of course we have the four sabers you fly in space and there is one wraith in this level, but there also is a glitch in the OG Reach where you can in fact hijack a Seraph. So one of the cool things about Halo Reach definitely are these odd glitched vehicles that we can count to add to the list. New Alexandria starts things off with two Falcons, though technically if you needed to, you could call in an evac and have an infinite Falcon. Also, because this level does have infinite Banshees just constantly spawning in and you can technically hijack them, we're just going to count this as one trick Banshee instead of trying to count the total number of Banshees since it's infinite, which would highly skew our overall numbers. Then of course there's the Easter egg that you can do, which gives you access to fly a pelican or even fly a phantom. Those were always fun things to do. The package on the other hand was interesting as it does actually have quite a few vehicles through and through. Now, firstly, there is this Easter egg you can do to get four banshees, which definitely is banshee love and we'd never get to see banshees get enough love in Halo. And then there's also one trick banshee we'll count for this list as well. But with all of the covenant just storming sword base between the upper sections and the ice sections. There's 17 total ghosts you can kill. You also have the scorpion at the beginning of the level, which you can use. And then there's also five revenants, two mongai, and three wraiths throughout this level as well. So all in all, the package does in fact have 33 total vehicles, which at the very least is still more than half of the total amount of vehicles in all of Halo Combat Evolved. With one level left though, we were jumping into Pillar of Autumn slash Lone Wolf. And once again, this is another level where we're going to run into infinite vehicles as there is a trick you can do to spawn infinite number of Mongozzlers. Essentially, it's a really easy trick. You just drive down to the end section and you can just essentially get a ton ton of these quads. Though, since we're trying to get an accurate comparison across each halo, we are only going to count the normal amount of Mongeats on this level. So overall, there are seven Mongos on this level. There also are quite a few trucks scattered about through this area, leading up into the Boneyard section with a total of eight trucks. And then along the way, you'll see some good old forklifts, actually four in particularly, one Wraith, two Ghosts, and there's one Trick Banshee from the Firefight section. And then on Lone Wolf, there technically are infinite number of wraiths. And while they are out of bounds, there are tricks you can do in co-op to bring a wraith inbound. So similarly, like our Mongoose situation, we will count this as one wraith, bringing us for a total between Pillar of Autumn and Lone Wolf to 24 total vehicles. So at the end of the day, we actually were pretty surprised how few vehicles Halo Reach had compared to the previous three Halo games. We actually thought Halo Reach would be in consideration for being one of the the highest counts when it came to Halo vehicles, but all in all, there's just a total of 134 vehicles across all of Halo Reach. Okay, before even going to Halo 4, we did kind of suspect that Halo 4 in general wouldn't have all that many vehicles. Just in general, thinking through the campaign, there's not a lot of moments where there are a ton of vehicles in scale to something like we've seen out of other Halo games. But it did make it really interesting to see how few vehicles there were and how it compares against the other Halo games. So starting things off, Dawn, of course, has 
has no vehicles, so Requiem is the first introduction to vehicles with four Warthogs, some of them you can get pretty early on. There are four ghosts on this level and two Banshees. Well, of course, with our Banshee rule, one Banshee is placed for the player, and, and then you can also hijack Banshees, so there is one trick Banshee accounted for. Forerunner runs into a very interesting problem. There are quite a few ghosts in this level, actually 15 total ghosts, most of them being just kind of stacked there at the very beginning of the ghost run. There also are three Banshees that you technically can take, but we ran into another interesting thing like we saw in Halo 3 and in Halo Reach, where these ghosts are technically infinite, as if you jump off a ghost and you're not being affected by the wipe mechanic, which there is ways around having an active wipe counter that'll kill you, you will just respawn in a brand new ghost and your old ghost is still there. This can lead to some hilarious moments where you're just infinitely spawning ghosts and just trying to use them to world war ghost your way over a wall. But outside of that, there's no real practical use of this. And just like the other halos, we're not going to count it necessarily, but a little asterisk or note acknowledging the fact that you can technically get infinite ghosts here. Infinity does have a bit more action going on with one scorpion tank and then 13 ghosts along the way. There's also four wraiths and six manga theses. Then also there's two warthogs and then there's three mantises which is kind of RIP for that fourth player who doesn't get to use the mantas. Reclaimer was up next with seven warthogs, 23 ghosts, 10 wraiths which definitely was a much more wraith heavy level than I anticipated jumping into this but when you start to realize how long this level actually is it does start to make sense. There are also two scorpions and one mongoose leaving a total of 43 total vehicles on this level and Reclaimer also marks the most vehicles on a single level from Halo 4. Shutdown is actually pretty simple there's just one pelican early on in the level, though later on in the level there are a ton of banshees that you can use to fly to the end, something we almost forgot about when we were going through trying to log all of these vehicles. Fortunately enough, we did remember and when we went back to check, but there are six banshees in this area. Composer is mostly an indoor level, though there is the little area where you have to kind of hold out with three mantises once again, rest in peace that fourth player, and there is one trick banshee that you technically can gain control of. And then just to close things out with Halo 4, there is Midnight where you have the four long swords I believe they are? Are they broadswords? Okay, I looked it up. It is in fact broadswords and I knew I had to clarify because I know someone out there would get really mad for me mistakenly calling a broadsword a longsword. Glad we got that settled. So with all of that, Halo 4 does fail to keep up with some of the heavier hitters, having a total of 122 vehicles across its entire game, still beating out Halo Combat Evolved, but also not necessarily getting up into the high 100s. But alas, we still have Halo 5, and there's still some hope. Halo 5 starts off a little bit interestingly, as Osiris, despite having a ton of stuff going on, doesn't actually have any vehicles. Blue Team, on the other hand, does have some Banshees in the last little area, and as it turns out, there's a ton of Banshees. We had a lot of confusion looking around and trying to count where the Banshees are, because there's four over here, there's two over here, there's two more over here, and we also had to account for a trick Banshee, so all in all, it looks like Blue Team had 17 total Banshees on this level. Glassed, on the other hand, is a pretty straightforward level, and surprisingly enough, counting the vehicles on this one wasn't actually all that hard. There were 10 Warthogs scattered about, and 7 Gun Geesons, and then there's just like one Scorpion also. So 18 vehicles on Glassed. Meridian Station had no vehicles, so we were on to Unconfirmed, which does start players off the old-fashioned way all the way back like in Combat Evolved where you're in a pelican for a brief moment, and then there are also three Gungus on this level as well. On evacuation, there is the secret Mongoose cart Easter egg, which gives you four geese right away, and then there are also some more later on in the level, making a total of 12 Mongooses. There's also two gun geese on this level, two Warthogs, one Gauss Hog, and surprisingly enough, one of the types of Warthogs we don't see too often, the Scout Hog, there's actually 10 of them. So in total, there's about 27 vehicles on this level, and this might be one of the only levels in all of Halo that has this many UNSC vehicles with 
no Covenant vehicles whatsoever. Next, we were going on to Swords of St. Helios, and this one is pretty straightforward. There are a few wraiths and two mantises, which you can use nicely, and at various points, you run into a few ghosts. So in total, there's nine ghosts, which brings us up to a solid 14 vehicles on this level. Alliance doesn't have any vehicles. So next, we were going on to Enemy Lines, which does feature a pelican. And along the way, we ran into seven ghosts. There was a wraith and four phaetons once again. Also, you do have access to five Banshees, which is kind of nice because it seems like in general the Banshees never get enough love. So we can add on another 18 vehicles here. Before the Storm and Battle of Sinion don't have any vehicles, so we begin to wrap things up when we get to Genesis, where we have one Scorpion tank, but 14 ghosts driving around alongside six wraiths you can take out. There's nothing on the breaking, and things conclude on Guardians, where you have two Mantises, one wraith, a whopping 22 ghosts, one warthog, and three gungooses to finish off all of Halo 5. So while Halo 5 Guardians did in fact do better than Halo 4, all in all we saw 150 vehicles across the entire game still not able to beat out any of those heavy hitters from the Bungie era. Still, despite all of the information we've learned along the way, it's really cool to compare the vehicles on various levels and kind of see how how some rank over some of the others. We really hope that one day we see a level, maybe something in Halo Infinite, that just has a stupidly high abundance of vehicles just for one of those special standout levels to maybe one day top things off on this list some way. But the real question here is which vehicle is actually the greatest vehicle of all time? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe with notifications on for more videos like this. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.